the political landscape right now and Trump and Biden and this, you know, whole election <laughs> scenario, basically. And there's a lot of volatility going on. And mm -hmm. I kind of talked to a friend about how there's two timelines dancing around and it just all depends on the collective consciousness and how it's going to tip the scale. And mm -hmm. I feel like one end of the spectrum is, you know, Biden winning and, you know, a lot of people have already declared it, including the media. And that's basically just positioning Kamala Harris to be, you know, the first woman president. But then on the other spectrum, it's like Trump is going to be the president um, and he's going to kind of overthrow all these, you know, fraud uh, ballots that have been sent in that are, I guess, fraudulent. So there's just all the stuff that's uncertain. However, mm. I also think that it's an illusion of two parties, that it's actually just one and they're just the face of this, whatever it is, power structure control. And it's like the puppet master behind the curtain. So what, what are your thoughts on all of that? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Galactic Federation, that uh, it was 2016, right? And um, a lot of geopolitical things uh, were happening back then uh, that were interesting and, and, and both important. So, um, Galactic Federation was unique back then. That's why I'm saying Galactic Federation. Uh, in James Ring's show, I, I explained that there, after there were, there were uh, Anlet Leader Federation and uh, uh, Orion Federation. So uh, now what they were looking for is one guy who has at least four density of, of the soul. So that is like a lifetime when you need to uh, get the things like a self-love and, you know, heart chakra things. You, you, you need to, to kind of um, live that life and, and to get that spiritual lesson successfully. Mm -hmm. So what were the souls they, they, they took to work with as delivery vehicles, it was a Putin and Trump because there was no other and better options. So I would not say those two guys are great. I just want to say they're, they are necessary and they are the less evil. Okay. So they, of course, can be uh, susceptible to many different negative influences, but now that um, that probability is is uh, and possibility is is uh, way way smaller because Trump has um, a few incarnated souls from galactic federations. Okay. So he, he has um, uh, one guy from Series B and he has uh, one woman who is a Pleiadian, incarnated Pleiadian, like in, in his team. And um, he has all, also some Mercurians there. Um, mm. From the other side, uh, I, don't, I don't feel that entity called Joe Biden is, is, is actually human. It is either a clone or some graphic visual illusion they can set. Um, some people who, who are uh, a journalist and, and, and who have like, um, who can see the stage, they saw actually from, from behind and from the side there is nothing. So almost so, like holographic imaging in a way? Yeah, some technologies they're using, you know. So the technolo technology they're using 
it's is is amazing because in kind of civil in engineering and 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 civilian life we don't have those technologies that they possess you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of that star wars movie when is it c3po or the little robot he projects this holographic image of obi-wan kenobi giving that message mm -hmm. to princess leia <laughs> and luke yeah. skywalker so it's almost like who knows, Biden could be a projection, a holographic pro projection at the podium, <laughs> debating yeah. Trump. Yeah, uh, all, all these puppet masters, they, uh, they mastered the technique of cloning like uh, 50 years ago, like complex clones, they, they are able to replicate, but for some reason they cannot replicate ears well. And when you look at the eyes of, of these clones, it is just no life there. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can physically see. And energetically, like there is no chakras, there is no kundalini, there is no energetic structuring around that body. It's just an entity, just a shell. Mm -hmm. So, um, and those clones kind of, they, they have some kind of bugs in behavior like if you ask them some some question they're not ready or their chip is not uh, ready to cope with that they, they're just stand or do something like like look at one spot and just don't talk or like they, there are some some weird things with with those clones uh, but i heard and then with dowsing, I confirmed, and with a psychic observation as well, that all that team that led the campaign for, for Biden is under arrest. Uh, and they are in Guantanamo Bay now. Um, wow. So if, if Trump really wants to stay a president, he really needs to listen. And, and he really needs to... Uh, to really do uh, what, what is meant to be done. Um, and if he does that, he will be protected. Um, and what would so, that entail, Marco? Uh, sorry? What would that entail when you say he needs to do what he really needs to do if he wants to stay you know, as president? What would that entail? Well, uh, I don't. I don't agree with uh, geopolitical experts and uh, politicologists when they say, you know, usually the president uses his first um, ma mandate to kind of introduce what he will do, kind of to uh, see um, how the people will react. And, and stuff like that. And then in the second mandate, the, he will go like the fully on, the fully. Oh, like the first term and second term type of thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I don't agree with it, you know? If, if you know that somebody set you there to, to do the, the, the job, and it's not just about USA, it's, it's about the, the whole collective consciousness, the whole world. Mm -hmm. And I always say to Americans, ladies and gentlemen, without Nisara, there is no Jessara. So you, you need to realize that administration battle and financial battle for humanity is in uh, USA. Mm -hmm. uh, essential battle for humanity, like a spiritual battle, is uh, here in Balkan. Oh. Why? Because uh, these Slavic people here, they have certain DNA and they know that, okay? Like uh, all, all world totalitarian regimes who, um, tend to take all the, like a rule domination. Uh, 
they hated the Slavic people the most. Why? Because they have very specific DNA. They are basically Indians of Europe. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, if you look at all those three continents, they are one of the oldest branches of civilizations. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you look uh, like a Indo-European culture, like it's, it's, it, it was born here on the Danube River mm -hmm. below Belgrade. So, so those people, they, they have that spiritual DNA matrix that is, they have like a conscience, that they have all these characteristics that is very close to Atlantean civilization. Right. So if you if you beat them to their knees, you will enslave the whole world. Mm. But it doesn't go like that, you know. We all know some Russians, some some Serbs, you know, some some Slavic people that are, you know, they call it stubborn. <laughs> I, I will not say they are stubborn. They they are just they just know what is right thing to do in the right moment. Um, of course, they have their their lacks and their flaws, but um, they have way more positive sides. And all crisis moments were solved here in the Balkan. And I will just remind your viewers that um, Mongolians were stopped here. Mm. Ottoman Empire is is destroyed here. Austro-Hungarian Empire is is uh, defeated military here. Like uh, German Empire is defeated here. Um, so during the NATO bombarding, they they, they couldn't do the uh, land invasion because we blocked their way to to do the invasion. So they know it, and that's why they they are using like uh, all kind of brainwashing mind games. Uh, but it seems that doesn't work fully. That's fascinating. Yeah. That's really yeah. so. The spiritual battles mm. are they? So would you say they're, they're played out in 3D as well as astrally? Um, like quantum leaping in different timelines as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, now we are currently lower 4D. We are heading towards um, higher 4D. Mm -hmm. So um, mysteriously, like a few weeks ago, uh, Patriarch or Serbian Orthodox Church died. And, there, and then a few uh, highest bishops died. Um, so yeah, they, they, are, they are doing like uh, murders, like physically, mm -hmm. but uh, b because on an astral and psychic level, they cannot do much. And uh, I would like to say also, Jody, that um, Indians, like a Native American Indians and, and the South American Indian tribes are playing very, very important role. Also Aboriginal people in mm -hmm. Australia. Yes. Uh, there was a beautiful, uh, very old Aboriginal lady that is a tribal leader of one of those uh, Aboriginal tribes. And she was predicting this moment since 1977 or something like that. Wow. And uh, she was also doing a guided global meditation where people uh, reconnect to Mother Earth. And yeah, they're also trying to uh, diminish their influence. But we saw what happened in USA like a few months ago the Native Americans got the right to use their land in uh, Arizona and in a few states, uh, the, the land was uh, getting back to them. Mm -hmm. Reclaiming that, the land. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's a good step. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. We need to respect the oldest people in the world. And we need them spiritually and essentially to win this battle. Um, in, in, from the other hand, in the United States, because the key financial battle and administrational battle is, is, is uh, taking place in uh, Washington, mm -hmm. in New York and stuff like that. Uh, there we need to have a really good like a military intelligence service organization and um, yeah I, I think that um, Pleiadians and Orions are having something in mind and um, it will be done to through Trump and uh, yeah I think he will be able to cooperate and, and do everything um, and um, pronouncing the martial law in United States is just a part of it. Interesting. So how do yeah. you see that unfolding? Um, well, <laughs> as, as I told you, Jody, in, in, a, in the first part, I'm not sure because uh, we were working intensively from uh, 12 to 21st of December while portal was opened. Uh, so I'm not sure in what timeline we, we slided collectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and meditation that we will do for a few moments uh, will help um, kind of disintegrate all the negative energies and negative informations from the humanity timeline so we can move forward um, and, and have good... Uh, have a good future, you know? Right. Now, when you say USA, there's a financial and admin battle. What, how yeah. does London play a part? Because they, for a long time, um, you know, the financial footprint for the world was in London. Oh, well, uh, you know, London, um, London kind of, kind of lost its power in, in mm -hmm. those um, aspects, uh, especially after Second World War. Yeah, yeah. Like U UK was uh, 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 the biggest colonizing uh, force or empire, if you will. Uh, but it, it was ended with, with the First World War and the focus and, and military strength kind of um, slide it towards USA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but that's how that's how they decided that at that time. Um, so what what Kennedy started, um, I think it it will be finished with Trump. Um, yeah, and they kind of predicted because if you watch the cartoon Simpsons the Simpsons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there was like a scene where where the Trump uh, has been killed uh, but behind if, if you look like details it, it, it is written like 2028 so like they predicted like they will do they they will do they they will bring the second victory but like the third mandate, they will try to, to remove him. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that um, his team, they, they, they really need to make counterintelligence uh, plan very well to secure him. Um, yeah, because because we are not like this dark dark force. We are not making the clones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but even even if they if they uh, remove him, there will be other um, people who will take his role from there. So, as I said, the outcome is already determined. So whatever they do and, um, and all their forces are, are uh, even weaker and weaker every day, basically. 
So whatever they do, it, it, it will not be, um, it will not determine the outcome. Yeah, that's so fascinating. So what my feeling was is, you know, I'll call it the cabal, you know, basically dark forces yeah. saw a timeline and, and possibly through Project Looking Glass, possibly through some technology where they're seeing a future timeline, saw a Trump win, uh, saw a Trump victory already happen. And so they tried to circumvent the second go at that um, mm -hmm. by a plan. And I think a Biden, Kamala Harris was one of those plans. And now like you're talking about, there has to be some counterintelligence to now circumvent that plan. <laughs> because you know this the dark force doesn't want that timeline to reoccur so it's just like this constant <laughs> battle of chess you know yeah yeah it is actually like a chess mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh yeah I, I like to call it jujitsu sparring but it's the same because uh, some grapplers they are calling brazilian jujitsu like a human chess just yeah. with the human body, because you know it's a repositioning, and you need to have a position to attack. Right. Yeah. It's, it, it is like a mental game, like a chess, like a strategy game, very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. And and I mean the thing is, is that we can tend to, if we're not aligned spiritually and anchored down to truly who we are it can be so confusing. I mean, and especially if you get caught up in the headlines, you know, and that's where I feel like, you know, you need to take a break and you need to come back home to yourself. And that is aligning with divine creator. And that's where you can truly hear direction and revelation and promptings from the wisdom, the divine wisdom that we all have within our DNA. And like Marco talked about, you know, this divine wisdom comes from just ancient times, like so long ago, thousands and thousands of years ago that we can actually tap into if we just ask our inner wisdom and our guides. And so that is available to us and we are our own authority. So we don't have to, you know, seek a guru or anybody else. I mean, yes, I have beautiful people on my show like Marco, who has this amazing wisdom, but we also have that wisdom within ourselves that we can always tap into. So I would encourage everybody to seek that. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, what, what I tend to do, Jody, is... Uh, because you, you wanted to uh, ask me about my personal journey. Yes. So from my personal experience, um, uh, once I started to, to work on myself internally, to improve myself in, in every aspect and dimension of reality, I kind of started with that shiny black face, which is a psychotherapy. I was working on my shadows on my fears, that kind of thing. Very basic things like dis uh, discipline, doing like a character strengthening that will help in these times. Then you, when, when you have a good foundations, when you can uh, control your mind and you're emotionally stable, then you can go to shiny white phase, which is the energy work and work with the soul. So in that um, phase, you're cleansing your soul and increasing the essence. Mm -hmm. And then in a shiny red phase, you, you, you're you doing the master work in alchemy and you're working with the spirits. And you can also uh, work with uh, divine consciousness itself. That means that you let go and let God work through you. That's the ultimate state you, you want to get. Um, like a, that's the top of spiritual development. So. And this is alchemy, basically. Process, 
right, Marco? This is basically, um, for those of you who don't know, what Mark was talking about, the black phase, the white phase, the red phase, that mm -hmm. is alchemy, what he's yeah. talking about. Yeah, internal alchemy. Yeah. Yes. So in this process, what I was uh, about to witness is that I started by myself with my resources. And then like in the middle of shiny white phase to the end of shiny red phase, I had a few of these ascended masters who helped me. Wow. So what you ultimately want to achieve with your guru or teacher or coach or whatever you want to call it is you want to learn technical things they can navigate you like they can save your time in so you can go in more effective way to the certain point when you come to that point that you can learn from the source directly from ascended masters from archangels from um, lemurians from from all these uh elders from federation of light then then you are you are very stable and 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 that is the ultimate state you want to achieve that is the endless source of information and resources uh yeah that's 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 how i uh, encourage my students to reach that Marco, that's amazing. How did these ascended masters show up in your life and how did you start working with them? Oh, okay. This was very uh, interesting experience. It was 2015. I uh, just started with Reiki and pranic healing. So it is the shiny white face, the energy work. And one night I uh, went to my biological parents house and just lie down in my bed to to just sleep but I couldn't so it was it was a like a spring but it was a cold night so um something was very very warm like my bones starting to to radiate heat like my body was a radiator of warmth and i i was uh, very worried and scared because i didn't know what's going on and um yeah it, the the whole room like the whole space around me was uh, tingling like i could feel actually static electricity around me wow. around my body yeah and um, here is like a five meter tall guy above myself like boom and it's like holy moly what's this <laughs> and he was dropping like a geometry on me and oh. i was like oh <laughs> i was really scared and um, and then in in, inside me, an eternal voice told me, okay, just don't be scared. I'm Metatron, I'm here to teach you. Wow. Uh, and I got these downloads. Um, my friends, they told me, oh, like it's direct download. Like what that means. That means like you're, you're getting actually information, not energy. Like you're not just attuned to, to some, to, to use some energy, like like you can restructure reality, you can restructure unstructured part of your consciousness. And I was like, uh, okay, like <laughs> it was it was 2015, but a few months after, uh, in in meditations, I got that. If you try to um, figure it out with your mind, you, it will never happen. Because mm -hmm. mind, like a rational mind, is always limited. Right. So what I got like, oh, screw this. Like, I, <laughs> I will I, I'll just let go of wanting to figure that out. I will just go and meditate. And then partially you can um, 
kind of unpack those informations that you got from um, from ascended masters and uh, like a part step by step I got um, I, I learned how to use those geometries and how that fit into my reality how I can uh, clear my timelines and like I I, I wasn't reading too much I wasn't listening what other people says on YouTube and mm -hmm. like because there are many people out there some are are pretty good on and and they know what they're talking about because they experienced that some of them they're just the new age people mm -hmm you know, like a new age movement and, and they're just trying to be cool, trying to be spiritual. <laughs> trying like, to be cool. <laughs> bad about it, but just the, the people who are real deal, they will know they're shallow. Some mm -hmm. of them, you know, yeah. but some of them are, are, are really good. So you really need to have a luck to, to just cross on something that is uh, legit. Right. How you will know it is legit, so that there, there are uh, many ways. Uh, how is that working in external reality? Uh, in which way is changing the external reality? Mm -hmm. if, if that is used um, on a good deeds towards um, uh, good goals, uh, how do you feel when you're doing that? Mm -hmm. um, there are many, many ways. Um, and um, just listen to your heart. Yeah. Because God gave us in that code. Heart chakra is like uh, maybe the most complex and most beautiful chakra of all by structure. Because uh, it's place where these earth and heaven energy are connected and inside the heart chakra we have uh, in a higher heart chakra we have internal crystal wow uh, i didn't realize that that's amazing yeah yeah we have all internal crystal inside in the higher chakra in between uh, throat and heart mm -hmm. and inside the god embedded code Mm -hmm. that can yes. differentiate good from evil yes mm -hmm. and and that that is the like internal voice of conscious yes and the interesting thing that is like uh, i spoke with some sufis in istanbul they told me that thing i love that i or did not know monks, that they, they say the same thing like the tibetan monks they say the same thing wait a wait a second there is something like is if if the people from different spiritual tradition they say the different things and from all these traditions there are confessions that are the spiritually purest right. like in christianity that is orthodoxal christianity yeah like you have tibetan buddhism like you have sufis they they there they they hold the, the essence of the islam that is not uh extremist terrorism and stuff like that yes you know they are the first guys who will judge that mm -hmm. say no it's not right that is the misinterpretation of the quran yeah and they will they will theologically explain you why is that so mm -hmm. if they all these guys from different traditions they they tell you the same things. Then you come to conclusion there is one primordial tradition. Yes. And the thing about the alchemy is that you find those pieces of, of puzzle that will give you the whole picture of that primordial tradition. Yes, yes. And, and that is kind of what trickles down to the 3D hero's journey, you know, our, our hero's journey, because it's like we go through these stages to get to like our highest frequency in a way. Um, mm -hmm. And then you, and you see it throughout movies, throughout books, you know, that journey that people 
can ascend to if they listen to those primordial traditions and that purity, that pure, that pure doctrine, so to speak. But as you were talking about this, Marco, some of the things that came to me is like, you know, in the Bible, they talk about, you know, by their fruit, shall you know them, you know? Uh. So, so, you know, as they're talking about these things and you say, yeah, are there things changing on the external? Are there things changing in their internal landscape? Is that coalescing, you know? I love those ideas that you're suggesting as far as how you can know if somebody's going to resonate with you and, and if what they're speaking is pure and resonates as truth for you spiritually. Yeah, and if, if I can add something really quickly. Um, so you were talking about the hero's journey. What is interesting, if you go to every culture, like uh, Arabic culture, Chinese culture, like Japanese culture, Western culture, any culture, you will see these heroes. You, you will see these people who are like the truthful warriors. They're fighting for the good thing. They have the same set of values, mm -hmm. which means the moral values are embedded in code of every um, subspecies, if you want to call it every yes. race, every nation. Yes. So we all know what is good, what is bad. And that is the same value principle. There are not, there, there is no multiple truths, as they say in philosophy of liberalism. There is a one true and there is the one universal set of values, of moral values. Yeah. And if that isn't true, uh, you, you, you would not find the same characteristics of these heroes throughout all these cultures. I agree. I just got chills. Yeah, I just got chills because it also reminds me of when you're talking about the heart and the higher heart chakra and being connected to that inner crystal. It reminded me of that's our true north. You know, that is our true north and our like inner GPS, our, our inner compass. And so we know like what is true and right. It is embedded in us. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's beautiful. So, so you basically, you know, in 2015 started really kind of taking this journey. And then you were like uh, in the white phase. Metatron was one of the first ascended masters that came to you. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because Metatron was one of the first that came to me, but it was in 2018. And I started waking up with sacred geometry stuff and seeing it. And I was like, what does this mean? I, I would draw it out on a whiteboard. And what I was realizing as time would go by is information would be embedded in the sacred geometry for my life personally. Mm. Um, and oftentimes I would wake up and I'd see these things. I'd go to my whiteboard. I'd you know, draw it out. And then maybe a few days later, I'd be like, oh, that's my alchemical journey that I'm going through right now, like in this phase, like that just happened to me like last month. And mm -hmm. it's, it was, oh my goodness. It's, it was so in depth too. spirit just kept saying, well, this is what this means. And this is what this means. And it was fascinating. It was really fascinating. <laughs> And if you, folks, if you want to look at some of the sacred geometry, go to Marco's website and we, I'll put that in the description. And I also mentioned it in part one. So, um, andromedianalchemy.com. Yeah. And actually I have a Facebook group. It's called comprehensive Andromedian alchemy study Beautiful. group. So you can, you can access to that study group and you will, I, I actually uh, give concrete steps and techniques how you can use that geometry and for what is that geometry. So uh, I will repeat the two, the two things that I said in a previous interview. Um, nobody's in authority is untouchable and check yourself. Mm. So he, that's how you can uh, validate internal and external reality. 
Are you okay? Do you have biases from your side? And is that guy who's telling you something okay? Mm -hmm. So you can check, take the, 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 the experimental approach, um, check those techniques, work on yourself, try on yourself, and yeah, let me know how that works for you. That's great advice. From there, after Metatron, what happened next? Oh, well, um, in 2017, kind of, I, I saw uh, and, and I finished um, my uh, unlocking my uh, lifetime memories. Ah. Uh, so because I was a warrior uh, in uh, two lifetimes, I was in Orion, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also a Zulu warrior. So that was my first lifetime on, on the planet Earth. And this one is the second. Okay. So this lifetime is kind of getting back to my original uh, nature, which is like this uh, spiritual father, shepherd, uh, alchemist kind of thing. Mm -hmm. not warrior mm -hmm. but because of that warrior side i had a karma and i, I had the karma especially with uh, with the opposite sex so i kind of asked uh and i was meditating on it i was doing a psychic observation i i continued deepening doing my shiny black face connected to it and um, when i meet my twin flame in 2017 um it, it it was like a it was like a dark night of the soul as they say <laughs> uh -huh. uh, like, yeah that girl she she gave me a really hard time <laughs> and um like after a few months i was aware what happened and then I kind of start clearing my DNA, my karma, like Ho'oponopono helped a lot with that. Yes. And um, then I met Kuan Yin, like she helped me a lot with that. Um, and other female ascended masters. Mm -hmm. um, That's beautiful. Yeah. And, and the... Uh, I was uh, working on my anima, which is um, internal woman inside every man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because like your divine soul, feminine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like our soul has masculine and feminine. Yes. Our soul has a tasks, like a, not just the soul purpose, but but tasks mm -hmm. and lessons we need to learn. But in, in our soul, the creator embedded the solutions for it. Yes. So that's why they say the answers are, are, are already within us. Mm -hmm. So true. And that's why they say the God will never put you into temptation that you're not able to cope with. Absolutely. It's, it's just a learning thing is just uh, evolving spiritually of course yeah yeah that's beautiful so okay <laughs> not getting too far off subject but tell us about if you want to the twin flame experience because i know that can be volatile actually for some people like you talked about the dark night of the soul because it brings up a lot of triggers it brings up anything you're not looking at because Twin flames tend to mirror you mm -hmm. and uh, trigger you. So, you know, there's there's the runner aspect. There's, um, you know, the chaser runner aspect. I don't know. Yeah, how yeah. Means. Actually, actually, um, actually, I was um, in, in the first phases of relationship. I was a chaser, and like she, she was a runner. Mm -hmm. and and like um i was com completely pure part of the essence and she was the dark one mm. so whatever i was doing she was like a turning back 
and and so turn back, get back to me. It was really, really unpleasant to cope with. Interesting. Um, so was that dynamic? No matter how conscious I was of whole situation, it was really emotionally painful. Right. Because there is a separation of, of, of these. Um, what you can do, you can put that essence into the matrix of eternal development. Oh, I like that, that. That's the shortest. Like, if I knew that back then, like, I would not suffer so much. But, you know, suffering is bringing you a lesson. So... Mm-hmm. No, no matter how how painful that can be, uh, just take care, respect yourself, love yourself. You don't 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 let it take like too much, too long. If that takes too long, you will just burn your essence. Mm. You know, yeah. your essence will be disintegrated. So, just take a few months if you are suffering too much. Just as the source for for uh, permission to put that another part of the essence into the matrix of eternal development. I love that. That is so, amazing. I, yeah. I've never heard that before. I mean, of course, you hear like you know, give this to God or help your spirit guides help you or whatever. But I've never heard of you know putting it in the matrix of eternal development. I think that's amazing. Now, yeah. Would you say with your experience with your twin flame, you know, that she was the dark, you were the light. It was almost like the yin and yang, but would that be because this is just a possibility. Would that be because she was trying to reflect to you looking at certain aspects that you needed to look at, like certain, maybe like inner child wounding that you needed to look at. And maybe for you, for her, you were reflecting that she needed to like come to the light more maybe yeah yeah mostly in my case what i noticed is that like there was a prime separation um because in first lifetime very first lifetime i was a patriarch of andromedia so i couldn't have like a partner because it's like a monk life and like that other part of the essence it went to the series b Mm. so we had kind of separated life and maybe that part of consciousness of hers like oh he left me Mm. now i'm gonna get him for for what he for what he done to me before and look at the patterns that's like um um i i had i had like that issue that i was crossing the women who tried to um like beat me emotionally really bad Mm. um because because in a previous lifetime i was uh, i was like a polygamist who were like a had a five women in a tribe and mm-hmm. I was like uh, not paying attention to them and stuff like that. So that's that's the golden rule of life. Like don't do something that you wouldn't like to, to be experienced in you. So yeah, I, I, I didn't know that back then. And in this lifetime, I, I learned the lesson. So but I was wise because I didn't take the longer path, which, mm-hmm. which was suffering. I took the wiser path that was uh, like uh, serving God and uh, transmuting and transcending that into a purity, into a consciousness. Okay, and- so, so the wiser path could also mean leaving that twin flame and transmuting the energy and just being uplifted to uh, a new ascended state instead of staying with that partner and suffering. Yeah. Uh, 
like I, I always say, uh, circumstances in your life are also signs on your spiritual road. Mm -hmm. it, it navigates you. Yes. You don't need guru. You just look, look at the patterns. Yeah. So if you get into a different patterns that doesn't loop, that doesn't repeat. Yeah. Then you're on a good path. Right. What I know, like after the meeting and, and uh, finishing the relationship with my twin flame, then I got into a few very short relationship relationships, but it was different. You know, it was better. It was uh, less painful more pleasurable but it was shorter like uh, when if somebody's not for you just go away just don't don't play the ego games like i will get you i will hurt you i will re revenge to you like i learned from the previous lesson that is not good thing to do so yeah every time i i uh, get into a new relationship, it was, uh, let's say, better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there's a mindset, though, with soulmates or, or twin flames that you have to stay in it until all your triggers are transmuted, rather mm -hmm. than there's another option where you can leave that, transmute it on your own, and ascend to a higher place, or like you said, put it in the matrix of eternal development. So I think that's a beautiful option. And no, there's not like a right or wrong, you know, it's a choice. Yeah, exactly. It's a choice. So whether, whether you will suffer, so either, either you will suffer or you will go to this better path, which is nine times faster for releasing your karma and wow. going through the path of your dharma, which is the serving of God. Wow, Trust I me, love that. that. You're serving your soul purpose. You know, get conscious, get aware of the patterns. Don't get stuck into the loop. Cut that loop from your timeline. Yeah. Move forward. You know, it's it's not easy, but it's simple. And the difference is in, in consistency. Mm hmm Oh, I love that. That's such great advice. Okay. Do you believe there's one twin flame or do you believe there's several? No, it can be several because one essence, one soul essence can be split into uh, many uh, pieces. Okay. That makes sense. So it could be braided into as, as another person as well. Yeah. Part of their soul essence. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. There is a process where you heal your soul or uh, earth or uh, heaven star chakra, soul star chakra. Mm -hmm. That's the latest chakra on your heaven pillar. If, if the soul is older than seventh density, then you go, you look at the heaven pillar. Um, in the fourth density soul, in that case, uh, that would be the fourth chakra. The soul is seated then in the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. So in both cases, what you want to do, you want to put the crystal net around the, the soul star chakra and go uh, psychically and look, look those pieces on the whole multiverse and draw them and while they passed through the crystal net, they got cleansed and they got reunited and healed. Mm. And that's how you increase and heal your soul. That, that is the real name, the, the real meaning of, of the word healing. You heal the soul. That is such a beautiful process. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do that in my next meditation. Yeah, there is a next. There are many ways to do actually, with the sacred geometry and crystals, with the numerology, with like a Graboi numerology. That there, there is a process. Um, I think the the number sequence they use is uh, two zero zero four zero three zero three. 
So what do you do with that number sequence? You concentrate on the wall with on that sequence and uh, make it um, in the sphere that is whitish silver. Mm -hmm. And then you shoot that whitish silver sphere at your soul star chakra. And that's how you, um, you do it like at least 21 days, then your soul get purified. Now, where does the number sequence come? Are you channeling that number sequence? Oh, that that was that came uh, that channeled the guy named uh, Grigory Grabovoy. He's a Russian scientist that like he's amazing guy. Like he's very controversial, of course, like every guru. Uh huh. Um, but he he has like a five or six PhDs. Wow. And he has uh, his own method. Um, I calibrated that like above 87% of accuracy. Mm. So it's pretty fascinating. Okay. Um, his technologies and his teachings are like hardly under understandable for, for like an uh, average person because it's very like scientific terminology and really complex. Like again, if you try to understand his teachings, um, with the mind, you will just get crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, if you if you meditate on those numbers, if you concentrate on it and and really concretely um, train and and uh, exercise that technologies that he gave, you will understand. And as you said, you will recognize it by it, by its fruits. Mm -hmm. So it's really good. Uh, what, I, what I found, Jody, is like, um, if you work with numbers, with number sequences, it's better if you work with a time. Mm. If you work through the space, the sacred geometry works better. But what if we can combine those two? Yes, I was just gonna say combining them, yeah. yeah. So number sequence are for some specific things better, and for some contextual things, uh, sacred geometry is better. So yeah, uh, this one contain, contain one chunk of information and it can on organize uh, one specific energy, numerology, and geometry can, can concentrate and, and organize the, the whole range of, of um, things. So, yeah. It almost reminds me of taking coordinates and remote viewing the multiverse and mm -hmm. trying to pinpoint certain things, uh, information, uh, whether it's for your soul and healing or for humanities as a collective and trying to heal that or anchor certain things for that. And so it's like Marco said, a beautiful thing to use the time or the number sequences with the sacred geometry coupled together. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Marco, this has been such a treat. <laughs> I, this is just, this is amazing to me. So I would love for you, if you're ready, um, and, and I'll, I'll ask you, do you have anything more that you feel in your heart or soul that you want to share before we do the crystal meditation? No, actually, um, I would like to jump on meditation. Okay. Uh, the goal will be actually to wake up that internal crystal that is on our higher heart chakra it will actually activate that structure. Okay. So everyone who is fourth density and above will get activated internal crystal. What can you do from there? A lot of things. Mm -hmm. Like you can transmute, like you, you can put the bad things inside the crystal and just spin and, and let it glow and it will be transmuted into something higher. Amazing.
Okay. Um, so let's do meditation. We will start by invocation. We will ask Divine Father, Holy Spirit and, and Son, all, all aspects of God to help us in this meditation. We call upon all divine beings, all the beings of light to support us energetically and informationally in this. And now we will um, psychically find the timeline of humanity. We will see the point of creating the earth and humanity. There is like a zero point. And we will ask for permission, ask source for permission to remove all the negativities, all the karmic contracts, and all sources and causes of suffering of humanity. Okay, so now take the right hand and let it glow with the the emerald light and from the elbow clear from left to right the timeline of humanity clear all the negative programs all negative thought patterns all low frequency feelings and emotions everything that doesn't serve humanity in its highest good. Okay. Now focus on your higher heart that is the point in between your throat and heart chakra you will feel there is a one glowy ball of light And if you start spinning that ball, you will notice that will grow and glow even more and more. And the faster you spin, the faster and more effective way will be cleansed. Now ask all the crystal alchemists all the Lemurians, all the elders to help you reactivate the crystal, internal crystal of eternity in your higher heart chakra. Make it fully transparent and clear. Ask the Holy Spirit to pass through your soul star chakra to your lower crown, to your internal crystal of eternity and going down to Mother Earth. Allow that crystal to be activated and reborn again, 
Let it glow. Think of all negative things, both of the planet or inside yourself. And just put it inside the crystal of eternity in your higher heart chakra. Let it spin, let the light spin and glow and see what's happening with that negative thing. Allow that crystal to spin with great speed and glow with very powerful light. Glow the Mother Earth with that light. Glow your timeline, your business. your family, all your internal aspects, your internal man, internal woman, your inner child, allow all energetic structures of yours your soul and spirit to be healed with this light. Okay. And if you think about some people who needs help or some animals you want to heal right now, just bring it close to your heart, like eight inches out of your chest and just allow that light to disintegrate all diseases, all sources and causes of diseases. All sufferings and all sources and causes of sufferings for that being your healing right now. Own that power. Ask the source to reflect the sacred geometry from the crystal to the Mother Earth, to all sentient beings, to humanity, to your timeline, to humanity timeline, Bless all people and the Mother Earth. Okay. From your heart chakra, draw the golden line to Mother Earth. To get grounded. To get connected to Mother Earth again. 
draw the golden pillars from your feet to core of the mother earth and slowly and gently come back to this everyday level of awareness. Express gratitude to the source and all light beings that helped in this meditation. Thank you. That was so beautiful, Marco. I feel so regenerated and uplifted. Ah, oh, that was just beautiful. Thank you. Okay, by the way, is, is your internal crystal like uh, transparent to white, something like a quartz? I, it, it was um, it was like a, an opal. So it was like clear, but it, it reflected like rainbow. Uh-huh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i saw i saw the same actually but it was like um in that rainbow the purple was like very dominating yeah it was yeah. it was that was so neat like when other beautiful light entities came to help i saw just like rows and rows of like light beings and then i heard almost like angelic choirs like helping with that it was really beautiful. So, wow, that was really neat. And all of you who participated, if you do this a couple times, I mean, this is really gonna be a game changer. <laughs> so, yeah. Marco, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I'm glad I, I, I gave, I, I had the opportunity in your show to, to give, to reach new people maybe uh, who maybe don't know about my work to give um, a lot of people um, this tool yes for for ascension and we we need that we need to get that now and uh, yeah for a few days we will see in what timeline we slide it but anyway if like imagine 200 people doing this every day at least three times uh in a row three days like that can change a lot yeah i'm planning to get this out as soon as it renders basically because i think this is so important as we get into 2021 i mean basically we are on the cusp or you know it on on the wake in the wake of the age of Aquarius. I mean, we hit that December 21st and, you know, it's, it's here, it's upon us. And so we have the opportunity to have this divine image of not only ourselves, but creating and birthing this new life and timeline. So for the collective, so this is beautiful. Well, Marco, it has been such a beautiful treat. You're a treasure. And I am so grateful for connecting with you and many blessings to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. See ya. Yes, yes. And to those of you, um, I wanna say thank you who have joined us. And if you are new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button and comment. Let us know what you resonated with and, you know, as we've talked about, go and visit Marco's website. His work is so impactful and I know will change your life as well. So thanks again, wherever you are in the world. And so glad that you joined us on Guided, helping you navigate your divine journey. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks, Marco. Bye. Bye.